COVID-19 has put millions of people out of work and the Australian government has committed billions of dollars to supporting those people through this crisis. Many more millions are suddenly working from home or in changed circumstances. Will life ever return to the way it was? Probably not. But COVID-19 provides an opportunity to develop policy and regulation that ensures a better employment future after the crisis. The crisis could accelerate the automation and digitization of work. There may be fewer jobs, or at least more people working digitally, working at home and in precarious work than there was before. Over recent years, many commentators have been warning about the impact of emerging technology on the so-called future of work, leading to many jobs becoming obsolete, and if not an overall reduction in jobs, a shift towards a world where human interaction at work is undervalued and more service jobs with lower working conditions are the norm. As COVID-19 is facilitating layoffs, stand downs, and major shifts in how work is being conducted, we shouldn't assume all these changes will be reversed when the crisis is over. Also, we may see some organisations using COVID-19 to bring forward restructuring and downsizing of their businesses in circumstances where resistance is less likely than it was before. One positive to come out of the crisis is that we are seeing the value of work that has previously been undervalued. Currently, the most valued members of the workforce are those still at their workplaces supporting our physical needs, our healthcare workers, and those stocking supermarket shelves and delivering food and other necessities. Many of these workers have previously been very undervalued in terms of the pay and working conditions they've enjoyed. Take food delivery drivers as an example, many of whom are classified as self-employed and who therefore don't enjoy the protection of minimum terms and conditions for employment. So the crisis may provide an opportunity for a reassessment of the value of some forms of work so that those workers are better supported and valued in the future. We need to start thinking about what long-standing and fundamental changes will be needed to properly recognise the value of digital work. For example, delivery drivers, whose work to date has largely been informal, piecemeal and unregulated. We could start by coming up with a new legal definition of employment, which includes gig economy workers. This would mean that in future, these workers are protected by the minimum terms and conditions of employment under our federal labour law system. More broadly, isn't it also the time to develop a more coherent approach to providing income security to our population to cover crises such as these, but also to address other less catastrophic transitions that we may experience across the course of our lives. When we move between paid work, unpaid work, education, ill health, unemployment and retirement. This could take the form of an underlying human right to social security and some form of universal basic income scheme, a portable pool of funds that people are able to draw upon when needed. So in the future, grappling, we aren't grappling for solutions when a crisis hits. And we need policy and processes for deciding which industries and jobs should be digitised and automated and which stay in human hands. There needs to be a plan for the economy and labour markets. This shouldn't be left to business to decide in a regulatory vacuum. The labour law system, which involves government regulators, industry bodies and unions in decision making about standards and processes for issues which impact on workers, offers a forum for new standards and processes to be introduced. COVID-19, as big a crisis as it is, could be a catalyst for thinking and policy development to allow these and other work challenges to be addressed in the future of work.